So first we start connecting the GPIO ribbon cable to the breakout port which is connected to the JTAG device that is connected to the system. Now we're powering up the Pi. And then we are connecting the HDMI cable for the screen. Now we're switching to the host system, uh, opening two terminals though. In the first one we go to the source code directory and we run this command uh, to just fire up uh, the GDP. Now to the other terminal uh, we uh, run the GDP link server. Uh, we go back to the first terminal and start connecting G the GDB to the GDB link server uh, through the ports specified. Now after we are connected to the Pi, here I made a mistake. I should be first uh, building the kernel image after any change uh, in the code and then load that kernel image uh, into the Raspberry Pi. Uh, so uh, because the code is not changed, uh, I only uh, load the kernel image to the Pi which I'll be doing in a few seconds. Here you can see that I'm loading the kernel image to the Raspberry Pi uh, through the GL GDP link, JLink server. Uh, now I'm setting the program counter to the beginning and I'm pressing C to continue the program. And here what happens. So we're using the SNES controller to control the video game. And here is an infinite loop waiting for input. And here we can, you can see that we can move the bell left to right. Uh, this is basically an infinite loop where the ball is at constant movement and in each iteration of the loop we just check for input to move the pedal left or right. Uh, and here we can see this, uh, the, the score at the top right and then also how many lives we have. And here the person also won the, won the game. And now there's another scenario for losing the game. As I said, here is uh, at the right. Uh, we can see how many lives the player have uh, until the game is over. Now he left. Uh, he has left only with one life. And we can see here it's a game over.